Anu is the divine personification of the sky. He was the supreme god, an ancestor of all the deities in ancient Mesopotamian religion. He was the father of the group of gods known as the Anunnaki. In this video, we will learn more about Anu and his part in the Sumerian, Mesopotamian and Hittite mythologies. The concept of sky gods being the supreme gods or kings of the gods and having offsprings who are important and powerful gods is seen in various mythologies. In the Sumerian mythology, Anu is the sky god. And like many other sky gods from other mythologies, he was the undisputed ruler of the universe and the supreme god to the other gods in the Mesopotamian pantheon. He was believed to be the supreme source of all authority, for the other gods and for all mortal rulers, and he is described in one text as the one, who contains the entire universe. Along with his sons Enlil and Enki, Anu constitutes the highest divine triad or trinity. This personifies the three bands of constellations of the vault of the sky. Evanthaw Enlil was venerated and worshipped by the people more than his father Anu. He was always regarded as the supreme being and divine father of the gods. Throughout Mesopotamian history, the highest deity in the pantheon was always said to possess the Anutu, meaning, heavenly power, it was named after Anu, which may suggest his importance in the mythology and history of the Sumerians. Anu was also the god of kings and of the yearly calendar. He was the father not only of all the gods but also of evil spirits and demons, most prominently the demoness Lamashtu, who preyed on infants. While he only had a small role in the mythology, hymns, and cults of Mesopotamia, and the details of worship of him is lost to history, Sargon the Great of Akkad mentions Anu and Anana in his inscriptions as legitimizing his rule or helping him in conquest. This suggests that Anu was very much worshipped and respected by the kings and his power of choosing the kings of the the mortals. He was originally a Sumerian sky deity and was was adopted by the Akkadians at 2375 BCE as Anu, the all-powerful. His primary cult center was the Iana Temple in the city of Uruk, but, by the Akkadian period, his authority in Uruk had largely been ceded to the goddess Anana, the Queen of Heaven. Anu's primary role in myths is as the ancestor of the Anunnaki, the major deities of Sumerian religion. The word Anunnaki itself means the offspring of an or Anu, Uras was Anu's consort in the earliest Sumerian texts but she later became the goddess Ki. In Akkadian texts, she was the goddess Antu, whose name is a feminine form of Anu. The name Anunnaki is derived from An, the sky god and Ki, the earth goddess. The Anunnaki consisted of many powerful gods and they were present in many mythologies such as Sumerian, Assyrian, Babylonian and many more. Some of their traits are common in all the mythologies but their roles and beliefs in them changed over time. They were seen as the seven gods of the underworld decreeing the fates of mankind and some beliefs say that they were responsible for the creation of humankind in order to use them as slaves to mine gold as a resource which they needed to save their planet. Anu briefly appears in the Akkadian epic of Gilgamesh, in which his daughter Ishtar, the East Semitic equivalent to Anana, seduces Gilgamesh to marry him. When he rejects her, she persuades her father Anu to give her the Bull of Heaven so that she may send it to attack Gilgamesh. When Anu tries to talk her out of this, she became angry and threatens him that if he reduces to give her the Bull, she will tear down the gates of the underworld and raise the dead to consume the living. After hearing this, Anu gives the bull to Ishtar. She then used it to attack Gilgamesh. The incident results in the death of Enkidu, Gilgamesh's dearest friend. A narrative from Canaanite mythology describes the warrior goddess Anat coming before El after being insulted, in a way that directly parallels Ishtar coming before Anu in the epic of Gilgamesh. 
In another legend, the mortal hero Adapa breaks the wing of the south wind. So Anu summons him and asks why he broke the wing of the south wind. Adapa answered honestly and Anu became so impressed of his wisdom. So he orders for Adapa to be given the food and water of immortality. Adapa refuses, having been warned beforehand by Enki that Anu will offer him the food and water of death. Maybe Enki already knew that Anu would give him the food and water of immortality but purposefully lied to Adapa that it was poison. After Adapa refused to eat, Anu forced him to return to Earth. The story of Adapa's appearance before Anu has been compared to the later Jewish story of Adam and Eve, recorded in the book of Genesis. In the same way that Anu forces Adapa to return to Earth after he refuses to eat the food of immortality, Yahweh in the biblical story drives Adam out of the Garden of Eden to prevent him from eating the fruit from the Tree of Life. Similarly, Adapa was seen as the prototype for all priests. Whereas Adam in the book of Genesis is presented as the prototype of all mankind. Some beliefs say that Enki understood that humans should be immortal as it would make them gods themselves and it may affect the natural order of the universe. In ancient Hittite religion, Anu was a former ruler of the gods, who was overthrown by his son Kumarbi, who bit off his father's genitals and gave birth to the storm god Teshub. Teshub overthrew Kumarbi, avenged Anu's mutilation, and became the new king of the gods. This story was the later basis for the castration of Uranus in Hesiod's Theogony. We will see more about this story and its similarities with the Greek mythology later in this video. The earliest Sumerian texts make no mention of where Anu came from or how he came to be the ruler of the gods instead. His preeminence is simply assumed. Sumerians believed that rain was Anu's seed and that, when it fell, it impregnated Ki, causing her to give birth to all the vegetation of the land. The Akkadians believed that rain was milk from the clouds, which they believed were Antu's breasts. Anu was the father to the gods Adad, Enki, Enlil, Gira, Nana Sun, Nergal and Sarah who were his sons and Anana Ishtar, Nanaya, Nidaba, Ninasina, Ninkarak, Namug, Ninibru, Ninsamun, Nungal, and Nusku who were his daughters. He's also thought to have been the creator of the demons Lamastu, Asig, and the Sabetu. Anu is most often represented in iconography simply by a crown or crown on a throne symbolizing his status as king of the gods, an honor and responsibility later conferred upon Enlil, Marduk and Ashur of the Assyrians, all of whom were believed to have been elevated by Anu and blessed by him. The main source of information about the Sumerian creation myth is the prologue to the epic poem Gilgamesh, Enkidu, and the Netherworld which briefly describes the process of creation. At first, there is only Namu, the primeval sea. Then, Namu gives birth to An, the sky, and Ki, the earth. And An Ki mate with each other, causing Ki to give birth to Enlil, the god of the wind. Enlil separates An from Ki and carries off the earth as his domain, while An carries off the sky. If you want to learn about the Egyptian creation myth too and see if it has any similarities with this story, I've already made a video on it. Tap the I button and check it out. In Sumerian, the designation and was used interchangeably with the heavens, so that in some cases it is doubtful whether, under the term, the god and or the heavens is being denoted. In Sumerian cosmogony, the flat earth was covered by a series of three domes which were the heaven. Each of these domes of heaven was believed to be made of a different precious stone. The highest and outermost of these domes was an. It was thought to be made of reddish stone. Outside of this dome was the primordial body of water known as Namu. Anana and Ebi, otherwise known as goddess of the fearsome divine powers, 
is a 184-line poem written in Sumerian by the Akkadian poetess Enhejuana. It describes En's granddaughter Inanna's confrontation with Mount Ebi, a mountain in the Zagros mountain range. Inanna petitions En to allow her to destroy Mount Ebi, and warns Inanna not to attack the mountain, but she ignores his warning and proceeds to attack and destroy Mount Ebi regardless. The poem Inanna takes command of heaven is an extremely fragmentary, but important, account of Inanna's conquest of the Iana temple in Uruk. Inanna and her brother Utu has a conversation in which Inanna laments that the Iana temple is not within their domain and resolves to claim it as her own. It then describes her difficult passage through a marshland to reach the temple, while a fisherman instructs her on which route is best to take. Ultimately, Inanna reaches An. He is shocked by her arrogance, but admits that she has succeeded and that the temple is now her domain. The text ends with a hymn expounding Inanna's greatness. This myth may represent the transfer of power of the temple from the priests of An to the priests of Inanna. After hearing all this, can we all come to a conclusion that Anu is just a loving god and has no fierceful nature? No we can't, there's another epic poem called Era and Isam which was written in Akkadian in the 8th century BC. In that poem, Anu gives Era, the god of destruction, the Sabetu, which are described as personified weapons. When the humans overpopulated and started making too much noise, Anu instructs Era to use the Sabetu to massacre them. In Hittite mythology, the supreme god Alalu was overthrown by his son Anu and then Anu proclaimed himself the ruler of the universe, but he himself is later overthrown by his own son Kumarbi. Anu tried to flee, but Kumarbi bites off Anu's genitals and swallows them. Kumarbi then banishes Anu to the underworld, along with his allies, the old gods, whom the Hittites syncretized with the Anunnaki. Because Kumarbi swallowed Anu's genitals, he surprisingly becomes impregnated with Anu's son Teshub and four other offspring. After Teshub grows to maturity, he overthrows his father Kumarbi, thus avenging his other father Anu's overthrow and mutilation. We see this concept of son overthrowing his father in many mythologies. Particularly, in Greek mythology, Cronus overthrows his father Uranus to take his place as the supreme bring. Cronus then consumes all his children fearing that one of them might overthrow him later when the child comes of age. At one point, his wife tricked him into consuming a rock instead of a child. That child is Zeus who after attaining maturity, overthrows his father Cronus and frees his siblings from his father's stomach. Then, with the help of his siblings, Zeus casts Cronus and the Titans to the depths of the underworld, just like how Kumarbi banishes Anu and the Anunnaki to the underworld. Evanthaw Enlil, the god of the air and wind, a son of Anu, later became more popular and got more reputation and worship from the people than his father. Anu was still respected as the supreme god and ruler of the universe and many people still continued worshipping him. Let me know your thoughts about the god Anu in the comments below. As always, like, share and subscribe to this channel. It helps immensely. I'll see you all in my next video. Thanks for watching.